Uh, members, please take up tab 13, Senate Bill 1526 by Senator Avila. I'm sorry, 13. Thank you, Madam Chair and Senators. This bill creates the Resiliency and Safe Structures Act, providing that a local government may not prohibit, restrict, or present the demolition of the following unsafe structures for any reason other than safety. First, non-conforming structures located within one half mile of the coastline, which are also within zones V, VE, AO, and AE, as identified in the flood insurance rate map issued by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Two, any structure determined to be unsafe by a local building official. And lastly, any structure ordered to be demolished by the local government that has proper jurisdiction. If a building is in one of these situations, it should be able to be rebuilt in a resilient manner according to typical local building code and zoning laws. The bill only applies to punitive measures tied to demolishing uh, and rebuilding unsafe structures. Replacement buildings would still have to follow local requirements for building new structures. That is the bill, Madam Chair. Are there questions on the bill? Yes, Madam Chair. Senator Pizzo. Thanks. There's a, another bill in the House floating around 1647 that will save a significant portion of, of area of my old but still sentimentally um, district, that, an area that I care for. Would you be amenable to taking the language from 1647 instead of 1526? Which Senator. has a coastal construction line as a delineating line. You're thank, recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for that question, Senator Pizzo. Yes, I am committed to uh, going in that direction and working with the House sponsor to adopt that language. Awesome. Any, any other questions? Are there any appearance forms for the bill? Joel Levine, uh, speaking in opposition. You're recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Joel Levine. I'm a volunteer tour guide with the Miami Design Preservation League, and I'm also chair of the board there. And I'm speaking to you from my personal experience. I'm at that stage in life where I'm fortunate enough to be able to travel the United States and the world a great deal. And wherever I go, I tell people I'm from Miami Beach. They always tell me, I was there two or three years ago, or I'm planning it's on my wish list of things that I want to do. Uh, I also want to tell you that as a, as a tour guide, people often stop me after the tour and they want to tell me about the rest of their trip in Florida. They're going to Key West or they're going to uh, St. Augustine or perhaps they're going uh, somewhere else and they want some advice. And my takeaway from all of this is that the strength of Florida financially and the ability of Florida to maintain its cultural heritage will best be maintained if we retain control for the designation and the preservation of our structures, we retain that control locally. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Senator Pizzo. Thanks. Mr. Levine, if it's, if it's so critically necessary for cultural reasons, why don't, why don't cities buy these structures? You're recognized. Well, if you, take a, if you take a look at a place like Miami Beach, you're mm -hmm. talking about an evaluation that would be beyond the capability of most localities. I'm not an expert, but I think that that's common sense. Follow up? Yes. So doesn't it also naturally follow as common sense that if I pay fair market value for a property that I should be able to develop it to its highest and best use? Not I, necessarily. Because I own it? Not necessarily. You're recognized. Oh, I'm sorry. Not necessarily because there's a value in the totality, totality, totality of the structures that gets lost when each individual structure starts to be developed. So, for example, if, if, you're, if you go, one of the most recognizable icons of Florida is Ocean Drive. Everybody who know, in the world recognizes Ocean Drive. If you start to place uh, high rises and other inappropriate structures in the middle of that, even one or two buildings destroys the totality of that. And by doing that, it destroys a great deal of the economic value of that, of that, of that neighborhood. Follow up? Mm -hmm. So if it's that critically important, why don't interested parties get together and buy them? You recognize. Instead of, it's that, if I may, as a qualifying, instead of a good faith purchaser coming in and restricting the highest and best use for that property. 
you know, again, look, I'm not an economist, and you're, you're asking questions that are somewhat outside of my expertise. I, I preface my comments by saying I'm speaking from my personal experience. So I can only apply a common sense paradigm sure. to your question, not the, par not, not the response of an expert. But again, in the totality, we have an asset. We have assets, because I want to be very clear that even though I'm with the Miami Design Preservation League, I'm not just speaking for South Beach. I believe that in the totality, those assets have greater value than they do as their individual assets, and that it's important to maintain the, the, the value of those assets by maintaining the historic districts that they represent. Thank you. Thank you. Daniel uh, Cualdo? Sir Aldo. Speaking in opposition, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Daniel Seraldo with Miami Design Preservation League. I was here last year. I'm back with maybe a few more gray hairs, but very happy and thankful to all of you for your service as elected officials. I want to talk today about this bill, which was filed, I think, last week, right as we were starting our annual Art Deco Weekend Festival in Miami Beach. We see about 100,000 visitors. This year's festival we focus on celebrating Florida's historic coastal communities from Pensacola to Jacksonville to St. Augustine to Vero Beach, Palm Beach, Key West, uh, Fort Myers, Sarasota. I'm sure I'm missing a bunch of them, but I think you see the drill. Um, and going back to a prior comment, the, it, this isn't like we want to buy all the buildings in the state. You all allow what's called certified local governments. There is a national recognition that American history is valuable and it is important. We could be the richest billionaire in the world. We'll never be able to buy all of Miami Beach. Even maybe the people behind this bill can't do that. But what we do want to do is be patriotic and preserve the heritage that we do have. And so this bill, while it may be intended for unsafe structures, what it's really doing is labeling every building within the flood zone. And I've got a map here that we just did through GIS since we got this a few days ago, but I don't know if they could show it in red, but everywhere within a half a mile of the coast, all of your places, all of your districts, they're just all of a sudden you could file a piece of paper, knock down a building, not only a historic building you could knock down, you could build the tallest building allowed now with the live local, you know, other complications that, that I know are currently being worked on. But what we're saying is that you've all allowed historic preservation this would be the first time any state has done this to really say no more preservation. Imagine the state of Florida without its coastal heritage. We believe it is an economic benefit. We invite all of you for a walking tour, but really we want you to look at the reserves every year and what we send here. We think that if, if it was just a free for all, we wouldn't have that economy that we share, the cultural heritage. And so we ask you please to work with us and not to label all of our coastal communities as unsafe. I live in one of those buildings. I own in one of those buildings. We're not unsafe. We work very hard to preserve. We have 40 year, 50 year, 60 year certifications. So please stop labeling it as unsafe. We're happy to meet with the bill sponsor and sit down and uh, thankful for your time. Quick question, Mentor. Yes, Senator. Mr. Toronto, good to see you. You too. How are you with the House language 1647? So thank you for asking that through the chair. If I'm you recognize. Okay, thank you. So the House language, although also last minute and we have not fully analyzed it, it does uh, have a cutoff for National Register. It allows any building that's on the National Register to be exempted. The issue we have is there's a t uh, the year 2000 cutoff. Since 2000, there have been almost another 1,500 uh, National Register listings, including about 125 neighborhood districts that would be impacted by that language. So if uh, Representative Roach is watching, we're happy to work. We've got everything mapped out. If there are certain issues, pain points, we want to get it done, but we don't want to throw out Florida's history. We believe it's not a partisan issue. Republicans and Democrats, we know, love our country. My grandfather fought in World War II. Sorry. Uh, Miami Beach was a World War II training ground, and to think that it's being called unsafe and, and labeled like this is really a sad day. So we're hoping to make a difference. Just, uh, just if I can yes, spare you another trip back up here, not that it isn't wonderful to hang out in Tallahassee, but I, I want to be clear about expectations. 
when a particular property is designated as, as a nationally historic registered property, that's different than a district. So I don't yes. want you to leave here thinking that if we're able to get the house language inserted 1647, that it means that a whole neighborhood's protected because very specifically, in order to your benefit of cultural heritage, single family homes are, are accepted from this bill, both bills. You understand? Yes, I understand. And by the way, the, the House bill has no inclusion of local government districts, which are thousands of other districts. So, yeah, there's the, even that one is bad, but is it less bad than this one? Yes. Follow-up question. Yes. And I've, you, I've, you've been at this for years, and you've been consistent on this, that you've not been a Johnny-come-lately on this issue. Um, what benefit, what economic benefit, does the owner of a structure who would otherwise like to raise it and build something else with a higher and better use? In New York City for years, transferring air rights, I mean, Grand Central Station, large towers, but they got the benefit of getting paid for not building something else. When all of these local historic districts and entities pop up, what benefit are they conveying to the owner so they, so they, want, so they voluntarily don't want to go ahead and build something else? You're recognized. Thank you so much. That's a great question, Senator. So I would say that in Miami Beach, at least, where I have uh, spent most of my time, we have overlays in our historic districts that offer incentives. As an example, we added a CRA in one of our districts in North Beach, which I think you were a part of, actually. And so the idea was that we would have historic preservation, CRA, more intense development, and then also funding for things like education and resiliency programs. If you look at the Raleigh Hotel, the Shelbourne, the Ritz-Carlton, they all received recently zoning increases to allow for new condominiums, but with the, the side benefit of restoring their buildings. So Miami Beach is a model for what to do. We love to come to your cities and help with your tax revenue because historic preservation is economic development. I'll have any developer talk to you if you like with billion dollar projects. They'll explain why it's, they like being in places with zoning overlays. They don't love being next to the abandoned a uh, lot that's there for 30 years like we see in other places not in Miami Beach and we think that zoning is just a basic democratic principle that we'd like to preserve. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you so much. Michael Costin speaking in opposition. Good afternoon you committee. Recognize. Thank you. I'm chair. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm Mike Cosden, board president for the Florida Trust for Historic Preservation. We are the state nonprofit that is working to protect our state's history and heritage. And I just want to share with you some of the concerns voiced by our membership and organizations and cities throughout the state that we hear about this piece of legislation. Um, first of all, of course, we share concerns for protecting what is the most valuable thing in our state, which is the safety and security of all of our citizens and visitors. Uh, but of course, we believe it's possible to have both safe buildings in our communities and to safeguard our unique historic places. Uh, if passed, this legislation would allow, with no required preservation board review, demolition of important historic structures throughout the state, which of course we've talked about, and, and it would restrict local governments in providing guidance on what would be appropriate to build back once that structure is no longer there. Um, we believe that as written, the bill would create some missed opportunities for demolition mitigation. It could negatively imp impact uh, tourism, Main Street vitality, and business development, as well as erase the things that make our communities unique. And there was conversation about how an individual single-family home might be contributing to something larger than just that house itself. We know that historic neighborhoods are what drive people to communities to feel like they have a sense of place. It makes it feel different from everywhere else that they've been. They're economic drivers as well. So we know that those historic neighborhoods and historic districts have an important place in our state. Um, we've partnered with cities and organizations throughout the state in hopes to work with the bill sponsors to amend the language, and I was very happy to hear the conversation between Senator Pizzo about um, uh, maybe making some, um, some um, changes or some amendments to that bill. So we believe that it's possible to protect the significant historic resources in our state while ensuring safety for all. Thank you. Thank you. George Levesque, Florida Chapter of American Institute of Architects, uh, speaking for information. Just briefly, on behalf of the uh, Florida chapter of the American Institute of Architects, um, we we do prefer the the House bill, but neither bill um, actually deals with a concern that we have. Um, both bills create exceptions for the National Historic Register or properties on the National Historic Register. Our concern are those locally designated properties. 
Um, so to the extent we've, I've had some conversations with the people who are advancing the bill um, and look forward to having conversations both with the House sponsor and the Senate sponsor to see if we can work something out. Quick question, Madam Chair? Yes, Senator. And, and I realize that there's a, a retroactive time inclusion in one of them, but, but what about there's never been any action or activity and all of a sudden I buy a piece of property and there, thereby there's, is the newly formed coalition against we don't want anything done on that lot whatsoever. Org. I mean, seriously. I, I, I understand your concern. I, I, I think the question there would be, are we talking about a property that has already been locally designated or is, is it something that, you know, is, is, to your point, they get some support, they get it on a local register and therefore it's, it's no longer protected. I, I think we would be willing to look at some type of grandfathering clause if they were, you know, if, if we reach the point where you're willing to add a locally designated gotcha. property. Madam Chair, these state historic that Michael just spoke of, is he created by statute? Do you know? George, I, 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 I actually, actually don't know. In, okay. in this capacity, I'm, I'm appearing as a lobbyist, and oh. I don't do land use. So, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Alex Fernandez, uh, Commissioner Miami Beach. You recognized? Thank you, Madam Chair, and I want to thank uh, the bill sponsor. Uh, certainly, uh, the uh, the House version of the, of the language is something that is of less concern, uh, and so and so I want to thank the, uh, the the bill sponsor for 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 his comments on that and for the time of his staff that that has taken the time twice uh, to, to to be with me. I, I appreciate that. Again, my name is Alex Fernandez. As a commissioner in the city of Miami Beach, I stand before you to express my concerns about the current language in SB 1526 and its potential impact on our city. Our historic districts, a cornerstone of our economy, not only enrich our cultural landscape, but also significantly contribute to the state's economy with approximately $119 million flowing back right here to Tallahassee in sales tax from our Ardeco districts alone. And while SB 1526 seeks to prom promote resiliency, it inadvertently creates a pathway for the demolition of historic buildings. The bill allows for the demolition of buildings within a half mile of the coastline within specific flood zones or deemed unsafe. This provision is particularly concerning for Miami Beach, where the majority of our historic districts and structures are located within these areas, as our island is only approximately one mile wide and predominantly falls within the mentioned flood zones. The bill's current language could lead to a dangerous precedent where simple violations classified as unsafe violations by building officials for minor rectifiable situations such as a leak or unpermitted work or an elevator issue could be escalated to an unwarranted demolition of a historic asset and this bill would prevent us local governments from preventing such a demolition of a historic structure. By allowing the demolition of buildings deemed unsafe without penalties and enabling the development of replacement structures to the maximum possible size, the bill indirectly encourages property owners to neglect maintenance, hoping to bypass local preservation regulations. And this scenario is not economically, it's not only economically detrimental to us as a community, but also poses uh, significant safety risks. I want to add that in Miami Beach, we have a record of working with property owners. Uh, you look Forbes magazines, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Wall Street Journal, a number of publications are writing about our development agreements with the Ritz-Carlton. We've worked uh, to bring a high-quality Rosewood Hotel into one of our historic assets. We're working with Michael Schvo, a prominent New York developer who's redeveloping another one of our properties, the Woodcock family, investing millions of dollars into, into redeveloping another oceanfront his, historic property. We can go on an endless list of efforts we we are engaged in and development agreements we've entered into with property owners who last year even sent a letter uh, to to the Florida legislature expressing their concerns about this bill and our own community has passed FAR development incentives to encourage and incentivize the development of residential uses and 
office uses and some of these even historic areas. We're all for responsible development, contextual development, but we're concerned about a bill that could inadvertently create an incentive for the neglect of property and that could hurt the postcard of our city, which is also your postcard, a part of our economy in Miami Beach and a part of your economy in the state of Florida. Again, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Senator, for your consideration of these concerns. Uh, we, I certainly appreciate your consideration of the House language. Uh, it certainly is something um, that we feel will cause lesser of an impact to our image and to our economy. Thank you. Joe Saunders, speaking in opposition. You're recognized. Good morning. My name is Joe Saunders. Um, I live in the West Avenue neighborhood of Miami Beach in South Beach, and I rise in opposition to this bill. Um, to quote uh, one of my favorite Miami Dade. Uh, local elected officials who might just happen to be in this room. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live anywhere. I want to live somewhere. And I think that is what is at risk. Thank you, Commissioner Eileen Higgins. I want to make two very quick points about this bill. First, it is clear that the language of this bill in the Senate is sweeping and broad. It defines an unsafe structure as any structure determined to be unsafe by a local building official. Well, in Miami-Dade County under Chapter 8, an unsafe violation could come from an a simple elevator violation, a leak, um, maybe um, a toilet that has been broken. There are over 700 unsafe structure violations in the city of Miami Beach alone. These definitions are far too broad. And the second point I would make is just a point about how our politics work. You know, in Florida, you shouldn't be able to be a wealthy interest who might be in tension or conflict with a local government, and rather than resolve those conflicts about how our cities should or should not grow, bring your conflict to Tallahassee. Tallahassee cannot uh, legislate how our cities grow and thrive that should live at the local level with local elected officials. Government is best when it's closest to the people. Please don't orchestrate a power grab here. Allow our local governments to control how our cities thrive. Thank you. Thank you. Kim Dinkins, a thousand friends of Florida. Speaking in opposition, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. A thousand friends of Florida is concerned about the local preemption in this bill that would prevent restrictions on building height for replacement structures. It would have the potential to change the face of some of our state's most iconic communities and put even more people at risk due to increased density or intensity in these highly vulnerable areas. This policy runs counter to the legislature's significant investment in, pr in improving resiliency. While we absolutely support the goal of ensuring that communities are safe, it's also essential that we protect the unique historic areas that make Florida special. So we ask that you vote note on the bill today. Thank you. Jack Finglass. Thank you, Jack Finglass, waving in opposition. David Cruz, Florida League of Cities, waving in opposition. Kelly Perkins, waving in opposition. Luclan Pizza, uh, waving in opposition. Melissa Duncan. Dunklin, waving in opposition. Mercedes Herald, waving in opposition. Jennifer Wolf, waving in opposition. Laura Morse, waving in opposition. Melissa Wiley, Florida Trust for Historic Preservation, waving in opposition. Ennis Davis, waving in opposition. Mark Zubali, waving in opposition. Uh, Curio Delane, waving in opposition. David Soleil, waving in opposition. Linda Stevenson, waving in opposition. Matt Forrest, waving in opposition. Town of Palm Beach. David Cullen, Sierra Club of Florida, waving in opposition. Jess McCarty, Miami Dade County, waving in opposition. Lena Juarez, City of St. Augustine, waving in opposition. Is there any debate on the bill? Uh, uh, Senator Baxley. You reckon? Thank you very much. Uh, this is a spirited debate and a lot of emotion. But we left one person out. Everybody's rights and claims and orders are all on, on the table. There's one person missing, the owner. 
What happened to property rights? Did anybody say property rights? Everybody else has a claim to somebody's property, but the person that owns it, apparently. Uh, I, I don't share that viewpoint. I think there's room in Florida to respect people's personal property rights. I know organizations where buildings were torn down that could have been saved and would have been saved because they were going to take over every detail of that redevelopment. That happens. That has happened where those kind of judgments were made. And uh, I respect each one of you's personal property rights. I'm not going to come and tell you everything to do with your property. I think there are some community organizations that have a wonderful experience to come and make people aware of things that we need to protect. We're also talking about a lot of properties that are vulnerable to windstorm and damage and serious change. We've seen whole communi communities uh, washed to sea because we kept things that did need to be moved or changed or included in a protected area that we manage. But that's when you own the property or the state owns the property. Somebody is a property owner that has a right to make some decisions about what to do with their own property. And uh, I, that may be old fashioned, but that's the world I live in. If you own it, you make most of the decisions. Yes, there are community-wide inputs and districts formed and all kind of information that can be placed on the table. Uh, but I'm just speaking up for the property owner. Imagine. They're supposed to do what they want with their property. You're supposed to do what you want with your property. I support this bill. Thank you. Senator Broder, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And I, uh, the great thing about this process is it's a citizen legislature. And so I used to live in a historic district. My home was on the National Registry. And my neighbors colloquially called it the hysteric district because the Things that they wanted to do completely uh, uh, ignored the rights of the property owner. We bought it. We spent the money. We're keeping it up to all the standards we wanted. But, man, did we have to jump through hoops. I had windows that would rot, and I had to replace them at $700 a pop every time they said I needed to. I could only use paints that were available in the 1880s. I wasn't, it wasn't gaudy. It wasn't purple. It just the reason why we are here today is because, and Mr. Levine said, it's important that we control. Not the property owner, we. Who's we? Not the property owner. The reason we're here today is because whoever is on that historic board is not working with the property owner to do the things that the nine-tenths of the law is, is ownership, is the, what that property owner wanted. So I have all confidence that you're going to work with the house sponsor, get it to a more palatable place, work with all the stakeholders. But I, for one, who have had experience with historic districts, am very supportive of this bill. Recognized in debate. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would actually not exempt single-family homes. I think there's a number of situations where people buy homes that are just old. Nothing really historic, just old. Uh, and, and I think they have, they have an interest in the highest and best use as, as to what they could do, especially uh, for climate change reasons. So I, I don't know why single-family homes, and, and you and I have spoken briefly about this bill, and you made every effort to get to me, which I appreciate. I don't know why they're accepted. Um, and my dad used to say, I wasn't the only available buyer, you know, for, 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 for some of these structures. Just So I think what's more equitable is if someone owns a home and then a designation is slapped on it afterwards, I think is, is, is really unfair. Because Senator Berman was, was in my ear, and she's absolutely right. If you eyes wide open go and buy a home that you know is either nationally or, or has some sort of historic designation, and you know the checklist that comes along with it. Yeah, you got to, like, use 19th century paint and probably drink mead. But I think it was Winston Churchill who said, no, it's an inside joke from yesterday, never mind. Um, what's really, really unfair is you're a good faith purchaser, you have plans, maybe you don't have the, the bucks yet, uh, you know, uh, assembled and saved, and then someone slaps a designation on you. To me, that's a taking, and I think that's unfair. So I don't know why single-family homes are out. Incredibly thrilled. So the 800 emails we got from all over the state saying that they are incredibly opposed to 1526. This is the self-serving soundbite from the Florida Channel that says, thank you for strongly considering replacing the language in 1647 with your bill. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention 
to, to those, especially from Miami Beach, it was my son Jack's best friend's grandfather who came to Miami Beach in 1985, Tony Goldman, and bought one property a month for 18 straight months when Miami Beach was a dump, was a dilapidated, blighted, criminally infested dump. And it was one wealthy at the time, getting wealthier, investor who bought 18 properties that completely turned around South Beach. One guy, Tony Goldman, who we lost way too young uh, over 10 years ago. And I agree with Senator Baxley. Like, you own it. You bought it. So, but the balance is if I bought a property without any kind of designation and then you slap on the designation to me, that's, that to me is a taking. So I, I think there's some work to be done on this, a lot of work to be done, I guess. Um, and I'm sympathetic to both sides. You want to retain the character, but at what cost and what expense? If Senator Broder had that, that home and had to comply with paint, you have to do these in places like Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket, and it works out, and it's commercially viable. But if you have all those restrictions and have all those burdens without any type of benefit, maybe he left out the, port, the part where he's not paying the same property taxes as somebody across the street who has a 1999 built home. I don't know. But we've got to find that balance uh, there. So my vote today is like I can give you a yes, which is going to be a no later if it doesn't drastically change, or I can give you a no today pending whether or not you change it. Um, <laughs> there you are. Any other members in debate? Senator, you're recognized to close in the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair and Senator. I'll take the yes today. Um, I, 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 I will say that it's, uh, it's safe to say I, I might not be able to um, have coffee at Miami Beach anytime soon. Um, but I, I, I will say this. I mean, Miami Beach is a, a fantastic community. A lot of our coastal communities are absolutely fascinating. They're beautiful. They're spectacular. The residents that live there are absolutely amazing. This in no way, shape, or form is meant to impact that or hinder that in any way, shape, or form. This is obviously a very delicate dance in terms of history and property rights. I'm always obviously going to err on the, on, on the side of property rights and making sure that those property rights are protected. This bill, uh, again, is, is, is really not meant to, to hinder them in any way, shape, or form. In fact, it is a local building official from the jurisdiction that has to say that this structure is unsafe. It is also the local government that has that jurisdiction to say that this structure, this unsafe structure, needs to be demolished. So it is not somebody else from another community coming in and saying that these buildings or these structures need to be demolished. It is basically taking into account what the local building official in that jurisdiction has said, what the local government in that jurisdiction has said regarding that unsafe structure. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the, the historic side of it. I'm obviously very, very sympathetic to history. I'm a fan of history. I love history. But we also have to be able to identify what is truly historic and what is not. So with that, I mean, in the case of Miami Beach, there's seven sites on the National Historic Register. However, the Miami Beach Historic Preservation Board has identified 2,600 buildings. Clearly, there's a big discrepancy between seven and 2,600, which would only lead some individuals to think there is some intent here that is not right. In fact, in 2012, Miami Beach voters themselves had a referendum on reducing the powers of the Historical Preservation Board, and 61% voted to reduce that power. That, to me, simply says, obviously, we need to do a better job in terms of identifying and protecting those property rights in a lot of our communities, but particularly obviously in this case with Miami Beach. Senators, I, as I mentioned before, I commit to certainly working with the House sponsor and adopting that language and working with all of the stakeholders to make sure that this is a, a product that is uh, a product that everybody can be proud of. And with that, I ask for your favorable support. Thank you. Tatiana, please call the roll on Senate Bill 1526. Senator Baxley? Yes. Senator Berman? No. Senator Bradley? Senator Broder? Yes. Senator Martin? Senator Pizzo? 
Yes. Vice Chair Senator Osgood? No. Chair Senator Kaladiu? Yes. By your vote, Senate Bill 1526 is reported favorably. Congratulations. Members, let's please uh, take up tab five. <laughs>